at that time there was like graffiti was just starting to take off in Chicago because of B Street, you know, cats started tagging, cats, you know, break dancing was big, you know, as you know, um, and you know, there wasn't really a lot of people emceeing. Um, I think break dancing was probably the biggest thing in, in graffiti. And so we was just doing everything. We was bringing all the elements. And I, you know, I, I was still emceeing. He was DJing. So we would, I would just go over his house after school. We would just make tapes. You know, and he had the beat machine. We would just like, you know, it was like the, the early stages of hip hop where, it, you know, Cass was on the beat machine. And um, we formed a crew called TCP, the crowd pleasers, which pretty much encompassed all the elements. We would go, I would battle Cats in my neighborhood, break in, you know, electric boogie, whatever, you know, we would take it to the wall, we would do, you know, just whatever. So, you know, there was a few block parties here and there, and there was, there was Cats who started to, like, it started to grow in Chicago. It started to really become more of a scene. And um, eventually, I mean, I, that's kind of how I built my name. I mean, from, from just back in the 80s, and then we just continued. And eventually, when the industry really started to take hold of, or take notice of hip hop as, as, a, as a marketing thing, and Cat started really getting signed and everything like that, we started to take it more, a little more serious. And um, we became the Mental Giants. We said, okay, we're going to keep TCP as the crew, but Mental Giants would be like the group, you know, the musical group. So me and Peely, we like formed Mental Giants. And we just, you know, started doing a lot of, a lot of different shows around town, you know what I'm saying? Um, and that's really how I built my name. You know, that's kind of how cats know me from just back in the day, you know, so uh eventually we well eventually what happened was i got noticed by a label in la and a friend of mine who was also from new york who uh wanted to sign me but he was just really starting his own thing out this cat named rishi actually he's from boston but the the label was based in in new york it was raptivism and this is like fast forward into like 1990 something yeah. um and uh they basically like Talk me into like, yo, you know, we want to we want to put this this project together. No more prisons. This was like 1999, and we want to sign you as an artist and put you on a, on a compilation for No More Prisons, which was a, a, a was it was a it was a, a record that came out um, around 2000, and it was it was a, it was a dope record. It was like a conscious record. It was you know basically talking about the prison system, and um, I got on that. But what happened was these these cats in L.A who were uh, Ill Boogie Records, which was an independent label in LA, they already knew about me because backing up to what happened was I got on a track with this cat, Jamalski. Yeah, hey, how, how did that right. come about? Okay, and then I, and, I, and I almost forgot that. Jamalski was a cat that Parker grew up with in New York. And Jamalski was like down with BDP for a little while. He was doing a reggae slash, you know, hip hop thing. And he got down with, Bo with Boogie Down Productions like in the, this was after BDP, like Chris kind of broke off from everybody. He started doing his own thing and he formed his own little crew. And Jamalski was like kind of hot that, at that time. So Jamalski was like down with BDP, doing like the Black Jesus and all those type of tracks. And um, my man Peely actually grew up in New York with, with Jamalski. So when he saw Jamalski in the magazines, he was like, yo, I know this cat. Mm -hmm. You know, he's like, I'm going to go back to New York and I'm going to find him. And, you know, we, I'm going to try to get in. So what happened was he went back to New York and... Jamalski had an a album deal with Columbia Records and he was in the process of recording this album and he introduced us, he introduced me to Jamalski. I went back to New York and met Jamalski and he was like, you know, feeling me because I was already like, you know, I was just, back then I would just spit for anybody, you know what I'm saying? So he was feeling me. So he's like, yo, I'm going to get you on the album. And I was like, you know, hanging out at Columbia Records, Sony Records. And um, this is when like Curious George just got signed. Nas was about to get signed. And we was like, you know, hanging out with his a with the A&Rs at, at Columbia, I jumped on a track called Akbar's Groove, which kind of became an underground classic because um, it was the only really rap song on his whole album because his whole album was pretty much reggae over over hip hop beats. So I he let me get a, a like a two minute you know just freestyle and I, I just killed it and it ended up like getting me a little bit of notoriety and and a little bit of a buzz. Um, but I you know I came back to Chicago and. I didn't, you know, I wasn't really trying to get signed at that time. And the label was a little bit interested in me, but they really didn't know, you know, how how I could fit in. And and I, and I was still pretty much like I didn't have a, a demo, you know what I'm saying? But they saw the talent, but, you know, I, I, I knew I wasn't ready. So I'm like, you know what? I got on the album, you know, that's, that's all good. I came back to Chicago and um, I just continued to do my thing. And so 
what happened was, like I said, years later, I ended up getting noticed by this cat um, at Ill Boogie Records, and they signed me, and I ended up doing the Big Bang Boogie album in 2001. <laughs> 